finish off our post-production efforts, we switch gears again. Now our questions focus on sharpening the image, adding blur to the image for aesthetic value, and asking ourselves whether we've gone too far. After all, our goal is to reveal the best in our images. We don't want to undermine that by going too extreme with one of our adjustments. Let's consider this image against our first question. Would selective sharpening or blurring change the focus of the subject in a way that would strengthen the theme of the image? When I look at this image, I notice that it's already blurred in the background very nicely, and then the foreground is, is pretty sharp. So I don't think that I need to do any sort of blurring or sharpening here to improve this image. I like it the way it is. So my answer there is going to be no. But there are some cases where you might want to do a blur along the edges and um, sharpening in certain areas to bring out the best in your picture. It's also quite common to sharpen certain aspects, but you want to be really careful in your subject's face, such as the lines around the eyes, the lines here in the nose, and the lines in the mouth and the teeth, and the outer line. Um, so giving a little extra sharpening selectively to those areas is sometimes um, a, a good thing to do. But in this case, he's so sharp and I like the way he looks. But I kind of don't want to undermine um, the overall image by going too far there, so I'm not going to do that. Okay. The next question I have is, do the edges of my subject have enough depth and is the overall image as sharp as I like? To find out if the image is as sharp as I like, I really need to um, zoom in and look at it. And I want to look specifically in the, the parts I care about. And he looks like he's pretty good in terms of sharpness. Now this is taken with a snapshot camera, so you can see there's a lot of, um, a lot of noise captured in there. But overall, it looks pretty good. All right. Okay, but I still think I'd like the edges just a little bit darker. Or actually, what I'm going to do is create a little more contrast along the edges so the light is lighter and the dark is darker. And how I do that is, there's already a copy here of my image, so all I need to do is Command or Control J to create a duplicate. And then I come up to Filter, Other, and High Pass. And this is really cool. This changes our image into a gray image. And um, we're going to use a blending option. When we blend with 50% gray, it turns it transparent which is pretty cool. So we're going to dial this down, this radius down to about one or two. I think I'll try two first. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, and anywhere where it's light and dark, it's going to accentuate when I overlay it and use blending. Okay, but I want to show you along the edges here what's going on. You want to be careful not to go too extreme in this kind of a, a fix or uh, an enhancement because we get something called haloing. Now watch when I bring up the pixels. Okay, that's too far. Okay, it starts to give something that almost looks like a halo effect, and that's not what we're after. What we really want is a sharp definition of dark against light, and so taking it back down to that two that we had, you start to see there's there's light and dark next to each other, and when we overlay it, it's going to enhance the light and darken the dark and make the edge higher contrast and so therefore give the illusion of greater depth without creating too much of a halo effect that's what we're after so one or two is just about all you want to do there okay say okay and now we're going to come up to our blending mode and we're going to start out with hard light and see what we think okay now the best way to check this is to just go with the regular it's kind of you notice that it also does a little trick of sharpening too in fact, it's a great way to sharpen the overall picture, too, because it deals with every line and creates more contrast. Okay, I really like that. Now I'm going to come in just a little bit closer so I can really see what this effect is doing. Okay. That's pretty cool. It does it to everything. It's just looking a lot sharper along those edges, and that's what I want. It's just giving me greater depth. That looks pretty good. 
While it's closed, let me check these other blending options and see if I like them better. It's overlay, soft light, and hard light. I think my favorite here might be overlay. Although hard light's pretty nice too. Mm, overlay. Like overlay the best. So those are the three options I would choose from. Um, and those look pretty good to me, so. Okay. Feel like that is definitely giving it the extra depth. It makes it feel like my subject is now standing out from the background just a tad more and giving it greater depth and makes it feel a little bit more alive. So I like that and I would accept that, um, that change. So finally, it comes down to when looking at all the changes I've made, are they subtle contributions to the whole or have I overdone it anywhere? Well, that's a good question, and when I get out to this point, it's really hard to tell. So my advice is to go and view the history. I'm going to scroll all the way up to the original image, which wasn't bad, but just a snapshot. And then we're going to take a look at the very last change and see how we feel about it. And I think, wow, yep, that's exactly what I wanted. It definitely brings out the best in this picture. I really wanted to capture and really give front stage to his happy face here. And, um, and I really feel like I've done that and I've given him the depth that makes him feel very alive and just really captured that smile there without having these other colors come in and argue too much. So I feel very happy with, with all of the changes I've made. So I'm going to live with all of them. So I'm going to save this file and then I'm going to eventually print it. Let's move on to our next image. Okay, so this is pretty sharp because of all of the other changes we've made already. But let's think about this again. Would selective sharpening or blurring change the focus of the subject in a way that would strengthen the theme? I don't think I want to blur anything and I don't feel like I need to really sharpen much more um, any of this image, but let's go ahead and come on in and see if sharpening would somehow serve us. Before I sharpen anything though, I want to make a, a layer uh, that's this image of, with all the adjustments in it all on its own layer. So um, I'm going to do Control Alt Shift E if you're on a PC or Command Option Shift E if you're on a Mac so that I can always back out. Let's go ahead and try Unsharp Mask here and see what I feel about uh, changes on this particular image. Okay. With sharpening, like anything else, I'd recommend something really small. So let's uh, maybe take this up to a radius of 2. And let's go up to 100% just to see what we, what we get here. Well, that does make quite a difference. And it looks good close up, but let's take a peek. Go ahead and say okay. Let's take a peek and see what this looks like far away too. Does it seem too sharp? Depends on what size you print this at, I think, and how this is going to look. Um, might be just the thing you want. Um, if you feel that this is too much, um, one of the things you can do is take down the opacity and just play around with this and see how much sharpening you really like for the image. It makes a difference on um, the form for which you show this picture too. So if it's small like this and you're, I mean, and I mean it's small form factor and it's on the web say, you probably don't want to have such extreme sharpness. Okay, but if you're going to print out a nice big uh, print of this, um, let's go ahead and view the actual pixel size here. Um, that might be a really appropriate uh, fixed for this, making it quite a bit sharper. Okay, if if this was actually this size when printed, you would want it to be as sharp as this. So it's one of those things about how you use your picture, how sharp you want it to be. Okay, let's uh, back out of this just a little bit. Okay, so um, there's nothing selectively I did. And when I'm looking at the overall sharpness, um, it, it just depends on how I would use this image, um, how sharp I'd like it to be, and do I have a, 
enough overall depth. I think that the depth is really conveyed by the sharpness of colors that happen. So it's you know a little bit faded back here, and as you get closer and closer, you get more intense colors. So this concept of depth is really conveyed already. I don't think I need to add anything to like the lines that you know any sort of contrast of lines. There's so many lines. There's already this implied uh, contrast that's happening in my brain, so I don't need to add to it. Um, like I say, you might want to do a little bit of overall sharpening and just uh, be careful with it depending on the size that you actually uh, wind up using your image. Okay, so that's how I would finish off this image and it's done. Let's go to the next image. Alrighty, and um, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I can't imagine doing any sort of blur or selective sharpening on this. I think it looks pretty good. I might want to grunge it a little bit, so perhaps let's let's take a look at that. Let's see what happens when we over sharpen and uh, multiply that. So Control or Command J to make a copy here, and let's over sharpen this thing. Um, let's see, enhance, unsharp mask. Uh, let's take this amount way up and the radius way up too. I mean, I just really want to go crazy here. You can start to see the halo effect. I don't want too much halo in the sky, so I'm going to dial that back just a little bit. But I want super sharp, super sharp, okay. Yeah, bring that threshold way down. Okay. Now this is clearly over sharpened, right? Um, I'm going to say okay. Okay, once we have it, we can start playing a little bit with uh, blending in opacity. Um, Let's try. Let's try hard mix. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Uh, just go up the blending modes a bit. Oh, that's interesting. I kind of like that one, that linear light. And let's try. Let's dial down the opacity a bit and just see what happens here. It's kind of fun. I I, I kind of dig that. Um, I dig that in the structure itself. So what I think I would do is add a mask to it, and then let's go ahead and press command I or control I if you're on a PC so that none of the uh, effect shows grab our paintbrush swap colors so that whites in front and I'm gonna make this paintbrush a little larger here uh, let's see let's try that okay it's a little large oh, that's a little small okay there we go kind of applying that change just <laughs> to the lighthouse and not much else. Okay. Right now I'm having a bit of a memory issue so my paintbrush isn't showing up quite the way it should. Um, let's go ahead and reduce the size Oops. and sw swap colors by pressing X or just by hitting the little swap button there and paint out where we don't want our effect to be showing here like in the sky. All right, well, that's kind of fun. Um, let's dial down the opacity just a little bit more. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, that could be kind of fun. I kind of like the effect. So I'd have to think about it a little bit before I, before I actually was com com completely convinced that over sharpening selectively was what I wanted to do. But it's kind of a cool effect here. It kind of makes it look more grungy. And the next thing I'd ask is, do the edges of my subject have enough depth, and is the overall image as sharp as I'd like? Um, since I'm not sure about this change, I'm going to go ahead and discard it right now. And I'm going to create a copy of this image with Command J or Control J if you're on a PC. And we're going to go up to Filter, Other, High Pass, just like we did before, working with the edges. And I'm trying to decide if this is strong enough. I may need to go up to three on this particular image. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. I just want to be really careful about haloing, especially where it would be in the sky, because that really shows up and it's obvious. And it's just, for me, it's one of my pet peeves, but um, it's definitely a style choice of preference. Um, some people really like haloing, so you just have to decide for yourself if you do. It's like, okay, and then we're going to go ahead and start with hard light. Ooh, yes, I like what's happening up here, because um, it's kind of sharpening. Um, that railing, which I think is kind of cool, but is it actually contributing to the overall depth? Yeah, I kind of think it is. Right along the edges here is making it stand out more. So I kind of like this. I'm going to go ahead and stick with that and um, move on to my next question. Is the overall image as sharp as I'd like? 
again to really know we need to view this in actual pixel size and it looks like it's pretty good yeah all right control and your minus sign to zoom back out okay and finally are all the changes I've made subtle contributions to the whole or have I overdone it anywhere um, that is a good question so let's go look at our history here and that was the original picture we haven't done much to this picture and then we come back down to our final blending change oh yeah I think it's contributed to it that's nice as important as how to do something is what to do and that's the major strength of the 20 questions method I hope you've enjoyed taking this start to finish journey with me and wish you the very best in your own post-processing efforts thanks so much for watching